Well, everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the LG G7 and see how this specific phone holds up in 2023. Now, what's so funny about this specific phone is that it came out a few years ago and it came off the heels of the LG G6. And if LG just kind of kept this phone kind of going with the hype and with the momentum of these devices, I think a lot of people would still be looking at LG phones as probably one of the better phones to buy. But in this day and age, I don't really think people are obsessed with LG like they used to be. And now that they've pretty much shut down their phone division, there really isn't even that big of a reason to even consider buying these phones anymore. So if you want to buy some phones, I would recommend buying this year though. Links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now starting off with the outside of the LG G7, this phone initially came out in 2018. So it has been many years since this phone has came out. What is it, like five years now? So it is pretty insane that a phone like this of this caliber came out that long ago because it still looks pretty nice. Like it's not an ugly phone. And I do think that LG, for the most part, made a pretty good looking phone and a decent successor coming from the LG G6. On the front of the G7, we had a 6.1 inch IPS LCD on the front and it was a 1440p panel and it definitely looks pretty nice. You know, it still looks like a pretty good panel. The thing that LG kind of did with this panel though, was that they did give it a notch. So the year right before this in 2017, Apple was the, not the first one to kind of, you know, remove bezel and all that, but they were able to go ahead and at a large scale, reduce the amount of bezel that was on their panels and basically give us a notch design, which was really cool. And I enjoyed that a lot. However, a lot of other phone manufacturers started to copy it. LG did it decently well, you know, they gave it a pretty small notch. Google with the Pixel 3 XL did it probably the worst I've ever seen ever. So I'm glad LG didn't have it at least the worst. And again, this one came out in 2018. So this was right off the heels of the iPhone 10. So on the front, it still looks pretty good. There's not really a crazy amount to complain about here. You're also still getting fairly slim bezels all throughout, which is honestly a pretty nice touch as well. On the bottom, you are getting USB-C, which is really cool. So having a phone like this with USB-C is awesome. And this is the best thing. You're also getting a micro SD card slot on this device as well. So that's another really cool thing that you're getting here. Not a lot of phones, even in 2018, had micro SD card slots. So for LG to actually have that type of capability, is really cool and that kind of stuff is really awesome without a doubt. Now on the back, you are getting a glass back on this phone, which feels and looks very, very premium. Once again, having a device like this that looks like that in that day and age, I mean, that's an awesome thing that you have going for with this type of device. Again, maybe it's not perfect and maybe LG didn't give it the best, most premium design ever. There were a few things that may have irked me at that time about this device. But like I said, I think LG did a good job and there's not really a crazy amount to complain about. Now, some few things I can complain about for one, not a lot of phone manufacturers were doing it at the time, but I would have loved to have seen like an inbuilt screen fingerprint sensor. I think something like that would have been really nice. Unfortunately, that really wasn't even that popular quite a thing until like 2019. So it's understandable why LG didn't really do it at the time, but still those types of things kind of make these phones feel a little bit more future-proofed. And maybe, honestly, I've been kind of thinking about this, I really liked how the LG G6 display and design kind of looked. And if LG kind of wanted to not even put a notch on this thing and just kept the same amount of like type of bezel that the LG G6 had, I think that would have been honestly pretty nice as well. They didn't, I don't think they had to go through and like, you know, copy the notch per se. So that's another thing that kind of stood out to me. But regardless, I think LG did a good job with the design of this thing. And I think it holds up decently well in 2023. Now, in terms of the camera setup, this phone had a few different camera modules on it. So on the back, you had a dual camera setup. So it was a 16 megapixel standard camera and then a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera. Then on the front of this thing, you had an eight megapixel sensor. Now this camera honestly was actually not that bad. In that day and age in 2018, not a lot of phones were actually bringing or giving us ultra wide cameras. In 2018, or at least early 2018 when this phone came out, we actually weren't even getting an iPhone with an ultra wide camera. All of the iPhones at that moment only had telephoto lenses. So this thing had that type of capability. I think the Pixels like didn't even have an ultra wide camera yet or telephoto lens. I think they still only had a single camera setup this year too. So I'm really happy this thing not only brought a dual camera setup, but also one of the cameras was an ultra wide sensor. So that's honestly a really nice thing too. You were also able to do 4K at 60 on the back as well, which is also a very nice touch. 
So I do think for the most part, LG did a decent job with this camera, but this was also during that moment where I feel like Samsung was really ramping up their camera production. They were doing really good. I mean, they had the Note of that year. I think the Note 9 came out this year, and they also had so many other phones that came out during this moment too. So it was really nice that you know they were able to give us that type of capability and those types of features on this LG phone. But still to this day, I think LG probably got a swamped a little bit by you know Samsung for the most part. Now in terms of software and longevity, this is probably one of the bigger areas where this phone just kind of is lacking at if I'm being honest. So with the LG G7, this phone has been discontinued for a few years now, but the biggest thing is the phone manufacturer who made this phone is also like their phone division has closed down. So that's kind of the big issue that you're getting. If you're getting a phone like the LG G7, this phone has been outdated for a long time. The phone division of the company has also gone out. So it's like makes zero sense at all to buy a phone like this, even like even to think about buying a phone like this. So that's kind of where the issue is with this type of device. It's not the end of the world, but it's just kind of one of those things that kind of ends up happening here. So in my opinion, if you're planning on getting a device like this, the software is probably the number one reason why I would recommend not getting a phone like this at all. However, when you actually look at the performance of this phone, it's honestly kind of surprising how decent, you know, this performance side this phone was actually doing. So from this specific perspective, the LG G7 had the Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 chipset inside of it with four gigs of RAM on the base model, but it did go up to six gigabytes of RAM. And the funny thing is about the LG G7 was that this phone honestly was not that bad of a performing device. When you're getting a phone like the G7 during that moment back in you know 2017, not right now, but back in 2018 when this phone came out, it honestly was a decent performing device. It basically had the same big major chipset that the other phone manufacturers were having. So I think that's a pretty cool thing. But you were also getting some other things here and there built within this phone as well, like some LG G exclusive features. So I think the performance factor of this phone was decent. I think some people may hear the you know four gigabytes of RAM and be kind of shocked by it. But you also have to remember that the Pixels of that year had four, and I think the Samsung Galaxy of that year also had four gigs of RAM too. So it's not like you were getting like a super slow, outdated phone. This thing was pretty much on par with what you were getting on some of the other major flagships of that time. So it's understandable. I think the OnePlus of the phones of that year also kind of had the same chipset as this one too. So totally understandable. If you were wanting to play certain, you know, basic games or even like major games, you know, in this day and age, you might be able to get them installed. But like I said, it, it, this thing has been outdated with software for a little bit of time. So you might not even be able to actually fully install these games or maybe even to, you know, get the major version or the latest updates for these games. But I do think LG did a good job with this phone overall and they gave it the best that they could. So. To kind of sum up this you know, video, what I'll tell you is, I don't think the LG G7 is worth buying in any capacity at all. This is not a phone I would recommend people to buy and use, but it is one of those phones that I'd recommend people to go ahead and you know, kind of study and look at because it was probably one of the last great phones that LG made. It was a good quality device. It probably had some crazy issues here and there that people kind of forgot about, but I think that LG, by giving this thing very decent display, no OLED display, but it was an okay IPS you know, panel, by giving it the micro SD card slot, glass on the back premium capability, like it was an awesome phone for sure. It was not perfect though, but I do think for a phone that came out in 2018 by LG, it was a decent phone for the most part. And it's basically almost five years old for me dropping this video. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.